Hello everyone, welcome back to this lecture on complex integrals. We shall continue with uh, our discussion on the Cauchy integral formula. So, uh, in the previous lecture, we had uh, talked about the Cauchy integral theorem. Uh, now, let us uh, look at the Cauchy integral formula, which is a very useful formula for uh, solving many different kinds of uh, complex integration problems. So, what the Cauchy integral formula says is basically this. Okay. So, suppose I have a complex function f of z, which is analytic everywhere on and within a closed contour C. Okay. So, I have a closed contour C and uh, all the points which are enclosed by this closed contour as well as the points which lie on the closed contour, the function f is analytic on those points. Then suppose z0 is a point which is in the interior of the C. Okay, then I can find out the value of the function at z0 using the Cauchy integral formula and the value of the function is given as this that is f at z0 is equal to 1 by twice pi i times the line integral over this closed contour of f of z divided by z minus z0. So, this is the Cauchy's integral formula. So, now you can easily <laughs> prove this. Okay, So, to prove that what we do is uh, within this closed contour C, we choose another contour, okay, which is also a closed contour, but which will be circular. So, this closed contour we call it as tau. So, tau is a circular closed contour which lies completely inside this outer contour C. And because it is circular, it will have a radius. So, let us say the radius of this tau is rho, and of course, the center of this is z0. Okay. So, now we define uh, another complex function using our own existing function that is f of z. We define another complex function which is f of z by z minus z0. We call this as g of z and as you can easily see here, uh, f of z is uh, an maybe analytic everywhere on uh, this uh, with inside this closed contour C, but this g of z, it has got a singularity and the singularity lies at point z0. Okay. So, this is the new complex function that we construct okay, using the existing function f of z. So, now uh, this uh, g of z, it is analytic at all points except at z0 because z0 is the singularity here. So, which means g of z is analytic in this region which lies between c and tau. Okay. So, by the uh, second corollary of the Cauchy integral theorem, the closed loop integral of g over this outer loop c will be equal to the closed loop integral of the same function g over this inner loop tau. Okay, So, integral over c must be equal to integral over tau. So, now we will like have a look at this contour a little bit closely. We will have a look at this contour. Okay, This is a contour. The central point of this contour is z0. So, this is that complex number z0 and z is any point on this loop tau and z prime is the difference between these two. Okay, So, this z that is this point z is related to this z0 as z minus z0 must be equal to this z prime okay which we call it as rho e to the power i theta so you just imagine a line over here and an argument of that okay, with respect to this point that is your theta okay so at each and every point as z goes from uh, around around this entire loop the distance from this point z0 will remain the same but this argument about z0 will change so this theta is that argument about z0. So, z is equal to z0 plus rho e to the power i theta. Okay. So, now you differentiate this. Now, z0 is a constant. So, differentiation of a constant is 0. So, dz is equal to differentiation of this and when you differentiate this, i will come outside. So, i into rho e to the power i theta and the differential d theta. So, now you use, use equations 1, 3 and 4 in equation number 2. So, 3 and 4 are this and equation number 1 is this one we use this in equation number 2. So, what you do is using equation number 1, this g is uh, replaced with f of z by z minus z0 and using equation number 3, okay, we replace z with z minus z0 plus rho e to the power i theta and dz will replace with this one. So, this was your g of z, this entire thing was g of z which was write as f divided by z minus z0 and f of z was the function. So, z I have replaced with z0 plus rho e to the power i theta and here also z I have replaced with z0 plus rho e to the power i theta and dz, there was a dz here, the dz I replaced with i rho e to the power i theta into d theta. So, now z0 and z0 will get cancelled, so which will give us in the denominator rho e to the power i theta and this again will get cancelled with this rho e to the power i theta 
so ultimately we will have the integral the value of the integral will be i integration from 0 to 2 pi f of z naught plus rho e to the power i theta d theta now you see this uh, limits of the integral has changed earlier it was just a closed loop integral because now i have parameterized with respect to this theta this argument theta so therefore it has become an open integral from 0 to 2 pi so let's call this as equation number 5 okay so this is equation number 5 so now as rho tends to 0 the contour tau would shrink but the value of i would remain the same why is that so it's from the corollary 2 of the Cauchy uh, integ uh, integral theorem okay so we could understand it like this okay, let me just clear this up okay so let's say this is your tau okay oops okay so this is tau okay now i have i want to evaluate this particular integral okay over this tau now what you do is i could this radius from here to here the radius is rho now what i could do is i could define i could make this uh, loop i could make this smaller and i could make this even smaller i could keep on making it smaller and smaller as long as the center is the same okay the value of the integral will remain the same why because as per the corollary of the cauchy integral theorem okay so let's say consider any of these two so this circle it totally lies inside this outer circle so the value of the integral over this loop must be equal to the value of the integral over this loop so i could keep on making this circle smaller and smaller so it means i could shrink that is rho ten tending towards zero okay the value of the integral will remain the same so in this case this i will be equal to this but this i is also equal to this entire thing on the right hand side with taking the limit as rho tends to zero okay so if i take the limit as rho tends to zero this whatever result i get that also will be equal to i by the corollary two of the cauchy integral theorem now limit rho tends to zero now we have z plus rho e to the power i theta so i can safely make rho equal to zero here so what will that will give us f of z naught f of z naught is of course is a constant which is come which is going to next come outside of this one so i f of z naught so integration of 0 to 2 pi d theta this integral the result of this will be equal to twice pi so i is equal to twice pi f of z naught so from equations 1 3 and 1 2 and 6 we have what is the integral i is integration of f of z by z minus z naught over the original closed loop c this must be equal to this so you inverse this so we have f of z not equal to 1 by twice by i closed loop integral of f of z by z minus z not so that's there is your Cauchy integral formula so now this is very useful because it will help us to evaluate these kind of integrals very easily so suppose i want to evaluate this integral e to the power z by z minus 2 okay i want to integrate this over a unit circle and the center of the circle is at 2 okay and the radius of the circle is one okay so that's that's the meaning when i say c is a unit circle centered around z equal to two it means we can write it mathematically like this z minus two that means this is the center and this is the radius okay so this contour is illustrated over here so we are having a unit circle a circle of radius one which is centered around two so the z equal to two that is the center of the circle and the radius of the circle is equal to one so this is the unit circle okay so now you can see here in this problem so we have to choose which is your f of z now you can see something divided by z minus 2 look at the denominator in the denominator we have z minus 2 so if you put z equal to 2 you will get obviously this is going to be a singularity so i will have to exclude the z equal to 2 the z minus 2 term i have to exclude so i'm excluding this whatever is left behind that is your f of z so we choose f of z to be equal to e to the power z so this will ensure that there are no singularities that lie inside this closed contour c so we have z not equal to 2 so now all you have to do is just use the cauchy integral formula which is this one okay so from the cauchy integral formula the integral of this f of z is equal to e to the power z z minus z not is equal to 2 so e to the power z z minus 2 is equal to twice pi i f of z naught so substitute here e to the power z z minus 2 twice pi and what is f of z f of z is e to the power 2 and z not e, e to the power z and z naught is equal to 2 so it is e to the power 2 so twice pi i e square evaluate this is approximately equal to 46.43 i so that is the result of this integral okay so now there are some problems okay some 10 uh, problems which i have left to you as an exercise in fact i'll be uploading them these as uh, an assignment so please do this at your own leisure using the following same technique 
okay uh, there is another exercise that i would like to just try you at home okay using the cauchy integral formula you have to show that the derivative of f of z okay the cauchy integral formula what does it give us it does not give us the derivative it gives us the value of the function at z naught itself okay so this is the cauchy integral formula the value of the function at z naught itself now what you have to do you can use this cauchy integral formula to show that the derivative of f at z naught is equal to 1 by twice pi i closed loop integral f of z earlier it was z minus z naught now it will become z minus z naught whole square okay so i leave it to you as an exercise so please prove this this also i'm going to upload it as uh, an assignment so that i've given you a couple of hints here so very simple so you have to use the formal definition of the derivative of f of z so we already know the definition of a derivative right this is the definition of a derivative then you apply the cauchy integral formula on both the terms that is this term as well as this term that is going to eventually give you this proof okay so now generalized uh, cauchy integral formula so it is basically uh, this result which we have which i'm leaving it to you to derive as an exercise this you can generalize this you see this is the first derivative right so when this is the first derivative the power is 2 so if you proceed then when you get a second derivative here the power of 3 will come so you can use mathematical induction and you can show that the nth derivative the value of the function the value of the nth derivative of the function at z naught will be equal to n factorial divided by twice pi i times the closed loop integral of the function divided by z minus z naught to the power n plus 1 so that's the generalized cauchy integral formula okay the proof of this is beyond the scope of your course so i'll not be proving this over here okay i'll just uh, show you an application of this one so let us say i have to evaluate this integral okay so e to the power iz by z cube dz where c is the circle okay i can see here z modulus z equal to 2 that means uh, in general the form of a circle is modulus z minus z naught is equal to radius that's the form so here there's nothing there's only z that means z minus 0 that means the center of the circle is the origin and the radius of the circle is zero so you have to evaluate this one okay so basically this is the circle the center is at the origin and the radius is zero okay so now this entire thing look at the integrand the integrand has got a singularity at z equal to zero because if i put z it has got a pole uh, to be specific it has got a pole of order three at z equal to zero okay so this is a pole of order three okay so now what we will do is uh, if we choose the function f of z as e to the power i z this will ensure that there are no singularities because this will exclude the pole z okay i'm choosing only this one as the function so this will exclude the pole so from the generalized uh, cauchy integral formula we have this formula so f of z dz by z minus z not n plus to the power n plus one is equal to twice pi i n factor by n factorial to f n z not okay now you compare this one f of z we said f of z is e to the power i z that means z naught is of course zero so z to the power n plus one that means n plus one must be equal to three so if n plus one is equal to three that means n must be equal to two so that means here we need the second derivative of the function okay so z to the power three is equal to twice by i by n is equal to two two factorial second derivative of this function and we evaluate this at z naught which is equal to zero so when you differentiate this once you'll get i e to the power i z differentiate once again you'll get another i so you'll get i square e to the power i z so i square will give us a minus sign substitute this you'll get minus pi i so that's the result of this integral okay again i'm leaving these problems for you to solve at home as an assignment finally we come to cauchy's inequality okay so if i have a complex function f of z which is analytic inside and on a circle of radius rho and it is centered at a point z equal to z naught then modulus of f of z has an upper bound uh, and the modulus of f of z has an upper bound on c that is f of z is less than or equal to m the conditions are very similar to your mn inequality except in mn inequality we had got the uh, bound of the line integral here we are trying to get the bound of the nth derivative of the function and this will turn out to be equal to less than or equal to m n factorial divided by rho to the power n where m is the bound of the function of the magnitude of the function okay n is whichever is the derivative okay uh, whichever order is the order of the derivative and rho is the uh, radius of the circle 
the proof is very straightforward so from the generalized cif we have this one okay so f of n, the n derivative of f at z0 is equal to n factorial by twice pi i uh, into uh, the closed loop integral of uh, f of z by z minus z0 to the power n plus 1 so that was your uh, um, generalized Cauchy integral formula now if I take the modulus of this one this will give me on the right hand side you'll have to take the modulus of the integral because this is anyway going to be a con uh, positive value now z in equation number one it lies on c right uh, because uh, here z is the uh, is the uh, variable of integration and we're integrating over c so that means this z it lies on c so that means z minus z naught must be equal to rho okay z minus z naught it must be equal to rho because z is no z naught is the center and z lies on the circumference of the circle so the difference between these two if i take the modulus that must be equal to rho so z minus z naught to the power n plus one must be equal to rho to the power n plus one now since f of z is much is uh, always less than equal to m so therefore this quantity that we have inside f of z by z minus z naught to the power n plus one this must be less than equal to m divided by rho to the power n plus one because this modulus is less than equal to m and this quantity modulus of this is equal to rho to the power n plus one so this is going to be the upper bound of this quantity okay so here you see the part of integration part of integration we're integrating over a closed loop of uh, a, a circle of a radius rho so the length of the part of integration is the circumference of the, of the circle which is twice pi into rho okay so therefore by the ml inequality we will have m that is the upper bound okay the upper bound of the magnitude of the function so which is the function that we are trying to integrate the function that we are trying to integrate is f of z by z minus z naught to the power n plus one and we already found out the upper bound which is m by rho to the power n plus one and the length of the part of integration that is l which is equal to twice pi rho so m okay this is the m from the ml inequality and this is the l for the path okay so from here we'll get one of this rho will get cancelled okay so so one of this row will get cancelled so we'll get a 2 pi here okay 2 pi divided by rho to the power n okay and then we substitute this entire thing back in equation number one okay this one when you substitute back in equation number one so we'll have n factorial divided by twice pi i okay uh, i'm sorry i made a mistake here i should have removed this i okay because we are trying to find out the modulus okay i'll correct this uh, when i upload the slides here so twice pi y a n factorial by twice pi and uh, this one will give us m by rho to the power n into twice pi so twice pi will get cancelled then we'll get modulus of f uh, the n the n derivative of f at z naught will be less than equal to m n factorial divided by rho to the power n so this brings me to the end of this particular lecture on complex integers okay so uh, in the next lecture we shall discuss the complex series and uh, sequences uh, these are the um, books that you can refer to for this particular uh, topic um, and all the problems that I have left for your exercise they are kept as assignments for you uh, I shall upload only those questions on Google classrooms as a separate assignment uh, you kindly start solving the problems and uh, submit your answers on time uh, the reason why I'm uh, uploading these questions as assignment is because in case our classes are curtailed for a longer duration then maybe I would be I, I could use uh, your assignment to give you some evaluation marks okay so uh, please feel free to discuss this topic and ask me questions uh, you may do so in the form of comments on our Google classroom or you could just send me a private message to uh, get your doubts resolved okay so uh, lastly keep yourself and your family safe uh, I hope to see you all soon goodbye for now